Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'firuhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdihillahu falamudilla lah wa man yudlilhu falahadiya lah wa nashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulku wa lahu alhamdu yuhyi wa yumitu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir wa nashadu anna muhammadan bashiran wa nadhira wa abduhu wa rasuluhu allahumma salli ala muhammad imamul muttaqin wa sayyidul mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmid din amma ba'd qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil qur'an al majid a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir wa man yattaqillaha yaj'al lahu makhraja وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا صدق الله صدق الله لَلِي لَزِيمٍ Dear brothers and sisters, today is the October 13th and 23rd of Muharram and we will be briefly talking whatever time we have about the legacy of four Imams. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the humankind with the best of the book, the complete book in the shape of Quran, 
the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam implemented it in his life and guided others to implement the companions tried their best to walk on the footpath of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and after the companions came tabain taba tabain and they were very close to the history or the final days of islam imam abu hanifa rahmatullah alayh imam shafi rahmatullah alayh imam malik rahmatullah alayh imam ahmad bin hanbal rahmatullah alayh they have left a legacy legacy of mindfulness what they learned from the quran from ahadith and from the companions of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they implemented in their life in a way which reflected what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been teaching and when we see each and every imam and look back what they have done it will reflect the verses of the quran the tradition of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but we should also realize that when it came to the opinion they also sought certain conditions for example imam abu hanifa rahmatullah alay he followed quran and ahadith but he was a mufakkir too mustahid too and he pondered a lot and nobody can raise finger against him when the matter of piety comes as it has been said for 40 years he made wudu in aisha and from the same wudu he performed salat al fajr you can imagine what he was doing in the night though the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he recommended in general after salat al isha go to sleep why imam abu hanifa rahmatullah alayhi was awake whole night because the prophet was gone the companions were receiving the knowledge the challenges from the far part of the world were more growing day by day so he had to find a solution from the light of the quran and hadith so his job during that time period was very challenging so he had to spend this uh, this time and that was the only time in the night when he can have peace of mind nobody disturbing it was not the day like today with lot of electronic media all around it was a very quiet time and, uh, and he pondered for 40 years sometimes people say that what the imam has said it is not in uh, in quran and hadith so will not follow that's fine but even to understand a hadith which came from different segments of the prophet's life which what is the final hadith that was their job to do similarly one day he was pondering and his students were in front of him you know what he put a question to them oh my students ponder 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 what happens if you are in the air and you have to perform a salat salat al farida at that time he didn't know that we will have plane boeing 747 flying from jeddah to uh, to toronto no but he was mufakkir and he thought of that at that time 
And that is how he gave a solution at that time. There are many, many things. People do say, oh, this is not the hadith. But the Imam also said, if you find any hadith against my saying, throw that saying to the wall and follow the hadith. Imam Shafi, rahmatullah, Quran and hadith. But during his period, he had to select people of higher knowledge to draw a consensus. How much challenges he faced on the way. Imam Malik, rahmatullah, strictly from Quran and hadith, but he 